guys, Chicago Bass Buddy here with part two of this scale practice warm up concept. So, in our first video, we really talked through the concept here, the rules of these exercises, how it works, and why we're doing it. If you haven't seen that video, maybe go check that out and then come back to this one. Uh, rather than talk through that all again, what I'm showing you today is a variation of that exercise. I mentioned in the first video that about every two weeks, I come up with a new version of this. So I never play it the same way for too long because I think after a certain point, we, or at least I, stop taking in information. Every two weeks or so, I'll mix it up. And I think that's good for our ears because we're getting different sounds going. So today is going to be a variation. And today I'm going to demonstrate a little more precisely what it looks like when I actually practice this, when I'm not explaining everything as I go. So uh, we're going to switch the key. Today will be an E flat. I mentioned last time, every day I bump my key up a half step. If I practice an E flat today, tomorrow I'm going to practice an E. Yesterday I practiced in D. You get the idea. I recommend that if you really are at an intermediate level because it's a great way to make sure you're hitting every key regularly. Uh, so we're going to be in the key of E flat. You're going to hear a drone in the background with an E flat power chord, just the root and the fifth. That's going to give our ears some context. We're going to have a metronome going at 70 BPM, and we're going to do eighth notes first, then triplets, then sixteenth notes, getting faster as we go. We're going to work through a whole series of different scales here. I'll call them out as we go. And today, I think in the last video, we went from the third up to the sixth, down to the third, if I remember right. Today, we're going to mix it up. We're going to start on the fifth. B flat. We're going to go an octave and a half up to the third. That'll be either G or G flat, depending on major or minor. And then come back down to the fifth. So fifth, octave and a half up to the third, back down to the fifth. We're not starting on the root. We're not stopping on the root. This is training your ears and your hands to get used to these scales when you're not so anchored in the root. So here we go. The first thing we're going to do, major scale, fifth up to third, down to fifth. We'll start with eighth notes. Let's do that one more time. And if you aren't already, get your bass or your instrument and play along. Practice this with me. I do this I play each one a couple times and I try to do the exact same fingering at least on a given day uh, if I'm going up in a particular manner uh, on the major scale I'm gonna try to replicate that each time I repeat it rather than do something different each time so that's the major scale now let's do the mixolydian and the most important thing here I said it last video but the most important thing is to listen the sound and the difference that you're hearing now is the sound of the flat seventh. Let's start to notice that. Do the Lydian. Now we're going to hear the sound of the sharp four. Let's do the major hexatonic. We're taking away the fourth. Let's 
to the Pentaton. Major blues scale, pentatonic with a chromatic note between the second and third. Those are our major scales. Now let's get into the minor ones. Natural minor, still starting on the fifth, up to the third, down to the fifth. Dorian, we're raising the six. Listen to the sound, listen to the difference. That's the sound of the raised six. Phrygian, so natural minor scale with a flat second. Hexatonic, let's take away the six. Minor pentatonic. Okay, so if you didn't watch the first video, those are the scales that I do because those are the scales that I use most often. Uh, you could, of course, swap these out for literally anything. You could do altered scales, diminished scales, whole tone stuff. You could remove some of these if you uh, if this is too much uh, and maybe you're kind of new to this stuff. You could add to it. You could rotate out. Maybe one month you practice major and minor. Maybe the next month you get into more diminished. Uh, this is what I'm going to stick to, though. So now we're going to do the same thing but in triplets. So it's going to be a little bit faster. We'll start with our major scale. On to the uh, dominant. Lydian. 
major hexatonic. things here with this one I'm demonstrating this where I'm striking each note with my right hand my picking hand you could of course do this with slides or hammer-ons or pull-offs if you want to practice articulations as well I'd recommend devoting some time to each of those maybe the first couple weeks you practice this you strike every note and then maybe you spend a little time with a variation where you're sliding into notes, maybe every second note or third note, or you're hammering on when you're ascending. It's a great way to be intentional with your articulations. Uh, but for now, I'm practicing striking every note because we want to be able to play that way when we need to or want to. We don't want to have to rely on slides or hammer-ons. You'll also notice I'm doing my best, more or less, not to accent any notes, but of course that's another way you could take this to a new level. You could accent downbeats, you could accent every second or third note and get into some polyrhythms. Um, you could accent just the notes with one of your two fingers and kind of work on right hand technique. I'm playing this all even, which of course we want to be able to do, but we also want to be able to play with phrasing when it actually comes time to make music, so feel free to try some of those things out. Now let's go ahead and get into the minor stuff with the triplet, so natural minor scale. <laughs> Here we go. to the Dorian. This is exactly why this is so helpful. I actually love this mistake. When you're practicing this, you're getting the sounds in your ears. And if you're really listening, hopefully when you make a mistake, you catch it with your ears sooner than you catch it with your fingers or your mind. And you have that moment of, wait a minute, that doesn't sound the way this is supposed to sound. That's like the best possible sign with this exercise because it tells you that you really are starting to internalize what does the Phrygian sound like versus a natural minor? Let's try that again. That's more like it. Let's do minor hexatonic. Thank you. 
through the triplets. You know what's left, let's try 16th notes. Now, this is where you're gonna find out where you should be setting your metronome. If 70 is too fast or too slow, when you get to the 16th notes, adjust accordingly. Wherever you're at, eighth notes should be pretty easy. We want those slow eighth notes. That's where you can really get the most ear training in. Triplets should be comfortable, but a little bit more challenging. 16th notes, maybe you're pushing your technique a little bit. Maybe that's less about really getting time with each note and more about hearing how the sounds as a whole when it's a flurry of notes. Let's uh, go through it. So major, major scale. Fifth up to third, down to fifth. That's our grid. starting on the downbeat but there's another variation maybe you want to try this leading in starting it on the 16th note before the downbeat or the triplet the eighth note triplet before the downbeat maybe you want to try this uh, as very very syncopated whether that's eighth notes or 16th notes only playing on off beats you can get a little bit of rhythmic practice in I think the most important thing is that uh, with these variations, go to those when you really feel like you're starting to get the sound in your ear, and it's a matter of solidifying it and hearing it in different contexts. But when you're first trying to internalize these skills, maybe just start uh, this way, hitting every note, eighth notes, triplets, downbeats, no accents. Okay, let's do, uh, let's do the, the minor scales, 16th notes, and that'll be that. So natural minor. as far as 
And that's so cool. I heard it without knowing anything was wrong in my fingers. There we go, using our ears. In this exercise, each time you make a mistake, it's a great chance to check yourself. Maybe if you hit a wrong note, before you move on, stop and think if you can identify by ear, what was that? Was that the flat seven? Was that the ninth? What was that? Let's try that again, minor blue scale. And of course, one of the keys here is you really want to listen to that drone in the background. We're starting and stopping, I suppose, each time here. Uh, but you don't want to lose track of the fact that that's not the root. This is the root. If I, as I'm playing, feel like I'm losing track of that and I'm starting to hear this is the root, two things I'd recommend. First, sometimes I'll pause for a second and just listen to the drone or the backing track so that I can kind of recalibrate to that being the key center. Um, also, especially if this is very new for you, maybe every second or third time you want to hit the E flat at the end. Just to help your ear really uh, stay oriented to the fact that this is the root and the key, that's the fifth. Uh, the sixteenth notes, when you're going up and down, if it's too much to do it all um, continuously, you could run up, pause, and then run down. So that would sound like this. You could do that for some of the scales, all of the scales. Uh, if the speed and the technique is really getting in the way, maybe try that first. That can help you to build up your ability to play at that tempo. So that's it. Uh, moving forward, I might do a few videos of some different kinds of variations, maybe getting away from just playing uh, by steps all the way up and down the scale, maybe getting into incorporating some different intervals or leaps. Uh, both these videos so far, we've ascended and then descended each time. Of course, you could flip that. You could just descend and then ascend. Also, again, if this is new, maybe simplify. Maybe for one week you just ascend on each scale. You don't descend at all. Maybe the next week you do the opposite. You just descend and then ascend. If all of these scales and running this is too much, either it's overwhelming or it's just taking you so much time each day that it's not viable, strip it down. Take a few elements away, make it simpler. Uh, this is something that, you know, if you're spending more than 20 minutes a day on it, maybe simplify it. Get to the point where it's more automatic, where you can move through it more quickly, and then you can add elements back in. So enjoy. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments, and happy practicing. <laughs>